Infinite Resonance Podcast. I am the conductor of this transmission vision. It is a beautiful day. It is the greatest time in human history to be alive. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad you're vibing with me. This is something that I've never done before. This is the very first episode of the Nagamati Library series. I don't know how long this series is going to be, but this specific topic, I'm going to have actually three parts. And this topic is called The Concept of Our Great Power. This is a chapter from the Nagamati Library. If you have never read it, if you are not familiar with it, there is a link to the PDF file. I downloaded one of the more user-friendly translations. I think it's something that you'll find enjoyable. You will be able to get what you need out of it and you'll learn a lot and you'll be able to follow along. So that's what we're doing. We're studying this old text and I'm not going to go too deep into the history of the text, but I'll just let you know that it was discovered back in 1945 in Egypt, a city called Nagamati. A peasant out there found it down by the Nile River and that's history. You can go ahead and look that up various places online. We might touch on it later on in the series, but right now we're really, really focused on setting the foundation for this codex that we're writing right now. We are currently writing a brand new codex, a brand new set of rules, regulations, ways to live your life, things you should eat, things you shouldn't do, remedies, uh, current events, we're putting that all together in this compendium. And also what we're doing is we're writing a brand new Akashic record on the blockchain. That's what we're doing as well. We have these NFTs, we have all of the latest technology and we're mixing it in with ancient wisdom. But before we can do that, we need to get a foundation of the wisdom. What exactly is in this text? What is going on with this book and why is it so powerful? That's what we're doing right now. So before I get started on this first little small mini series, let me give you a little background with my history with this book. I actually bought the book off Amazon in November of 2014. Around that time, I did, I took some notes. I did some reading in it at the kind of like, you know, in the beginning of the book, kind of just read some pages. I got real busy with work. I started taking the, my online business a lot more serious and I just kind of put the book down. I picked the book back up around summer of 2020. We were all on COVID lockdown still. Picked up the book, um, did some videos for one of my groups. I actually manifested a great relationship with a young lady named Phaedra. She's out in California. Big shout out to Phaedra. And it just kind of went from there. We, um, yeah, we, uh, me and her study a very, had a very tiny little bit of study in the book. We kind of scratched the surface a little bit, but I just picked it back up a few days ago. So now we're in 2022. So almost, you know, about a year and a half later after me and Phaedra kind of touched on a few topics, I picked up the book. I thumbed through it a little bit. I didn't know what I was looking for. And I ended up on the concept of our great power. And that truly resonated with me. The concept of our great power sounds exactly like infinite abundance. We have been screaming infinite abundance for the last 10 years. And now I see where we got it from. Without me even looking in this book, just having the book with me, I was able to, I guess, psychically or spiritually or akashically or however you want to say it, I was able to take in the knowledge from the book without even reading it. That's how powerful this thing is. So right now, that's where we're at. I picked up the book. I found this passage. I went online. I found a translation that's more digestible, that's more user friendly, that's easier to read. And I put it out there for everybody. So that's it. That's my story, my introduction to the Nagamati Library. The words resonate with me. I can actually embed them into my daily life. 
and I would recommend anybody go ahead and download the PDF. It's free. Let's go ahead and get into the meat and potatoes of this presentation. This is a three part presentation and we're just going to dive right into it. The concept of the great power. The first sentence, he who will know our great power will become invisible and fire will not be able to consume him. That right there shows you that we're on the right track. I think they, they wanted to just catch your attention with that sentence and it does. Just think about this. Anything that you read in the rest of this pa passage, as long as you can follow the first one, you're all good. All right. So I think I, I like the way that they just set the tone in the first sentence. Now let's go on to the second sentence. But it will purge and destroy all of your possessions. What that says to me right there is that we're on the right track with this minimalism gig that we're on. This minimalism way of life. Regardless of how we play it, this fire is going to consume everything we physically own. That is why it's imperative to put things into the Akashic Record. That's why it's imperative for us to connect on the astral plane. Because anything that we physically have to connect with, like these phones or these computers or anything else, that will be consumed with fire. Now, it may not be a physical fire. It may be... The internet is turned off. It may be Wi-Fi signals or electricity is cut off. The electricity grid can be cut off. And that could be setting fire to our communications abilities. A lot of these things in these texts are not literal. They're allegorical. That means that you have to use your, your discernment to be able to make sense of this. But... I think it's very important for us to just realize that when we're dealing with our great power, the the idea that these things that we're working on physically can be destroyed, I think that we need to always keep that in the front of our mind. We have to keep that centralized in any of our planning. This is why things like NFTs are very important, digital representations digital real estate instead of physical real estate that can be burned down or stolen or taken or repossessed. We have to deal with things that are sustainable. Minimalism is sustainable. The lifestyle that we have, this holistic lifestyle that we have is sustainable. These are all things that we are putting into our toolbox. These are things that we can access later on that will still be relevant. Everything that we're building right now has relevance globally. It has relevance in any time frame. It's timeless. But we have to go back to the ancient text to be able to see where this comes from. And luckily for me, I'm able to take in these texts simply by having them with me. I think that we need to really assess what's going on on this earth, not just from a a position or perspective of what's man what man is doing to the earth we need to see we need to think about what is the earth doing on its own the earth doesn't really need us the water and the waves of the earth they sustain the fish the birds um they they give us rain they don't need us humans are on earth messing things up humans are throwing off the natural order but if we spend our time contemplating like, OK, how how magnificent this water is without us. It's a mic again, it's another allegory. It's another microcosm of what we're doing with this vortex. These are all things that are kind of circling back and just confirming that we're on the right track. This is how you should go about studying ancient text. You should go into the ancient text thinking that. You basically already know all of this stuff. You're just going through certain passages that, that need to trigger certain responses. That's all it is. You need to be triggered in the certain actions so that you can add these components into your toolbox. Your toolbox is your contribution 
to the Akashic Record. And now, because of technology, we have ways to set things up in the Akashic Record that will last forever. This is not the same as hosting something on a website. This is not the same as creating a document that may or may not be compatible with your computer or this guy's computer or that guy's computer or a future computer. We're talking about things that will always be compatible and always be relevant. Just like this Nagamati library that's thousands and thousands of thousands of years old. These texts were just found in 1945. These contain certain writings that are older than the actual Bible. And they describe characters and beings and entities. The same characters and beings and entities that are in the Bible are in this text. 